We all use the internet, but do all of us really know what it is? Spoiler alert, this is the internet. That's right, it's literally just a bunch of cables. And the cloud that you keep hearing about is literally just more cables. Let's go a little deeper. My favorite definition that I found about what the internet actually is, is a network of networks. We're gonna dive into throughout the rest of this video about what that actually means, but I wanna start off with an example. The example I'm gonna be showing is just sending a regular email. So the email is obviously created within a computer. That computer is connected using an ethernet cable to your router. We're gonna label routers R. For those that don't know what ethernet is, this is what the cable looks like. These type of cables are usually cat five or cat six cables, and they're usually made of copper and they send little electric pulses. Now modern technology is moving towards these cables. These are fiber optic cables. They are very similar to the copper cables, which send electrical pulses, but instead of electrical pulses, they send pulses of light. But now before we go even further, maybe we should cover what exactly is an email and how does it get sent using these wires. So within this email, you might send something like hey to someone. In computer language, that hey gets transformed to ones and zeros. This is called binary. And binary is how these actual pulses mean something to the computers. So back to this graph, we're sending ones and zeros here. When you're sending it across a network, this thing is called a packet. A packet is just a special word for some more ones and zeros, but the special thing it has, it has some destination information at the beginning. This is also gonna be ones and zeros so that the pulses can actually transmit this information, but it tells basically where this piece of information needs to go. And that's where this next piece comes in, the router. So we all probably have a router at home. If we're using the internet right now, we have to have a router pretty much. And a router, just like it sounds, routes those packets to where they need to go. And within your house, you have a specific wire that you gotta plug that router in in order for you to have information. So this specific wire right here is provided by what is called your ISP, or Internet Service Provider. So let's set up this little wall. On the left side is your home, and on the right side is anything outside your home. So inside the home, you have you, and you give your money to the ISP, which in return gives you this cable right here. So this cable is your internet. Now there can be more and more layers of these ISPs. There's local ISPs, there's regional ISPs, and then there's global ISPs. And those bigger global and regional ISPs are called the internet backbone. That is just bigger and bigger wires that the internet runs on. Just to give you a little visual of what exactly that looks like. So this is the internet backbone of the United States. So these are all cables running across the whole United States of America and they connect your internet within the state. Then there are the global ISPs which connect the countries and the whole globe together. So these are huge, huge wires running on the floor of the ocean connecting countries together with internet. And that's how the internet infrastructure is held up. But the scary thing is for countries like this that only have one wire running to them, if something happens, maybe a shark bites it, which actually happened before, the shark didn't actually do anything, they didn't cause any damage, but there's stuff like ships running their anchors over the wires and breaking them. You could lose internet for days at a time and have no way to contact anybody. So that's the internet backbone. And now you do the same exact thing in order to get to the other person's computer or phone or whatever. You go through their ISP, you go through their router and into their computer where they get that email and they can open it and then these this packet gets decoded by your browser and gets turned into the message, hey. Now I might be thinking, what about phones? You might understand how the ethernet cable connects to everything, but how does the phone get to the internet? It doesn't have any physical connections anywhere. So a phone works in a very similar way. You could think of a phone as more like a, like a radio. It sends out little radio waves and it can connect to cell towers just like that. It uses a thing called frequency modulation. So let's say you got that same email that you want to send with your phone. Instead of going through an ethernet cable into a router, into the ISP, it goes from your phone to a cell tower. And remember, we're doing the same thing. We're sending the same email, same message. So we're sending that hey email and the data again gets converted into ones and zeros to be able to be transmitted. But how does it get from the phone to the actual cell tower? Well, we said frequency modulation. So it uses radio waves and these radio waves could look like something like this. So frequency modulation means they send different frequencies for different types of bits. So maybe this is zeros. When they're a little bit smaller, they're ones. And then when they get bigger again, they're zeros again. 
and that cell tower takes in that signal and does the same exact process as we had before. So depending on the cell tower, they might have to connect to the ISP, or maybe they are an ISP themselves, and then connect to the internet backbone, and then they can send it to either another computer using cables again, or maybe another phone to another cell tower that can broadcast that to the phone. So that's the basics of what the internet actually is, but I wanna go a little bit deeper to really understand what the internet is and how do websites work and things like that. So remember that definition of the internet being a network of networks? This is the part where we actually get to understand what that means. So a network is just a connection of computers. You don't need the internet to connect two computers together. You can use a device called the switch, which basically takes in cables from both computers and sends those data bits to the correct computer. Using switches, you can create what's called a LAN. LAN means local area network. If you're into gaming, you've probably seen this word before. It can connect to people through LAN to play video games in a very low latency type of way. So this is what a LAN network looks like. Now in this LAN network, we have two computers, both connected to each other by a switch. Now that switch connects to a router, which then connects to the ISP, which then connects to the global ISPs and everything like that. So here we haven't really done anything that we haven't learned here before, except maybe expanded a little bit more of where this actual email comes from. So we said a network is a connection of computers. So as we can see, this is a connection of two computers. And the internet is the network of these connections. Now I hope you can imagine that this chart gets a lot bigger with a lot of other different networks being connected to each other. So basically this whole thing, that's the internet. Every device that's connected to each other in the whole world is the internet. So the term connecting to the internet is literally just connecting to a computer that's not within your network or somewhere else in the world. Any computer that's outside of this LAN, if you're connecting to it, that means you're connecting to the internet. So we expanded a little bit around on this part of what where the actual email comes from, but I wanna expand on the rest of this graph and what each part of these looks like. And then at the end, we're gonna go over what exactly means to connect to a website. So like we mentioned before, router is pretty self-explanatory, but there's a reason I wanna dive a little bit deeper. A router has these things called a router table. So within the router, there's this thing called a routing table. And this basically determines where your packets get sent to, where they get routed to. Now there's complex algorithms within there that we won't really get into, but they handle to make sure that your packet gets sent through the most efficient way and uses some complex algorithms for congestion control to make sure nothing gets like too packed up. And basically defines a route for where your packets need to be sent in order to get to the actual person that it needs to get to. So now let's take a look at what the ISP looks like. And for this one, we're actually gonna cover the ISP and the backbone. In the grand scheme of things, both of these look exactly the same, just on different scales. So these ISPs and backbones are pretty much just more routers. So this whole infrastructure is built upon routers basically determining which is the most efficient way to send your packets. The ISPs, of course, route a little bit less, and then the backbone routes a lot more. So if we're saying this is the ISP, you get the data from your router. It goes to the accepting router of the ISP, figures out where this message needs to go next. Maybe it's down here, then here, then here, then here, and then out to the backbone or whatever other routers needs to go to. And at each stage, at each one of these stages, we're using the routing table to determine which path it actually needs to take. Now you might be wondering, why is there not just one big router everywhere? And why is there a whole cluster of routers? So I live in Illinois. I don't know if I'll be able to draw it right. It looks something like this, right? And we have a company called Comcast that runs it pretty much everywhere. So if they just had one router right there, everybody would need to connect to that router from the whole entire Illinois. But if you have routers more spread out and more of them, you can not only get faster internet, but be able to find the most efficient path for everybody to go through. And the biggest thing is that there's no single point of failure. Let me explain some more. So the big thing is there's no single point of failure. Let's use this graph up here. So let's say this router goes out and maybe even this big router over here goes out you're still able to get that message using this route right here. So that's two big routers going out, not working. The internet is still working in general. The ports and wires is just kind of physical limitations. If you have a one router, let's say we had that one router for all of Illinois, that means every single wire from every single 
LAN network would need to go into that router. There's just not enough ports there. And another thing, it would just be very, very long wires that, you know, if anything breaks, you lose all connection to the internet. And then the last thing is for efficiency. Let's say there's a computer right here, trying to talk to a computer that's right over here. Instead of having to go all the way to this one router and back, they can go to their local ISP or local provider of internet and not really have to go much further than that. Now that's just within one state. Imagine all of this happening within a whole country or maybe even the whole world. This type of network layout makes a lot of sense. So now the last thing I wanted to cover is what does it actually mean to connect to a website? Because I think we all understand that the connection between computers, sending data between them makes sense, but what? how does a website get loaded onto your computer? So I copied the previous chart we had down here because you'll notice it's exactly the same thing. So let's say we're using this computer right over here and this computer wants to go to google.com. So you go to your browser, you type in google.com. The browser recognizes that as an IP address. So an IP address you could think of very similar to a home address. It's the way to identify a computer that it's that computer. Your computer requests to see the information at this IP. So that request goes through the whole process until it gets to this LAN network. Now this is what we call a server. What is a server? It's just a big computer. <laughs> so this specific server that we're connecting to holds data for google.com or for that search result you're looking to find. Once it gets that data, it returns it back to you using the same way. And it usually returns HTML files or something like that. The information the actual browser receives is ones and zeros, but it's able to figure out what that actually means and turn it, make it look pretty. So if you've ever worked with websites or made your own, you've probably heard the term of hosting your website. What this actually means is putting your website onto a server and the hosting part of it is basically holding that website data for you. This way you don't need to build up a whole bunch of servers in your house or very expensive computers to be able to run 24 seven so people could actually access your website. Companies provide hosting services for you. They have a bunch of computers running all the time so that people can access your website whenever they want. Now, Google, since it's such a big company, probably has servers all over the world so that they can be connected to quickly and efficiently. While small companies, if they're doing their own servers instead of using a hosting service, they might only have one server location in the world. And in order for you to connect to that, you need to go all the way across to their part of the world and come back. But as companies get bigger and bigger and scale more and more, especially for things like YouTube, which Google owns, by the way, they have servers all over the place. And this way they can minimize that distance that the data gets to travel and thus the websites are faster and people can get their information quicker. So that's a very high level of how the internet works. Learning about this made me realize how crazy this world actually is, that all this stuff just works all the time. And it's, it's just a bunch of cables, it's really all it is. Let me know if you want to know more about this topic or if you have any other questions. And there should be a video on the screen if you want to learn about more cool stuff like this.